Welcome, everybody. You're watching and listening to the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network starring Martin Patella, health coach at the Life Enthusiast uh, company. How are you doing, Martin? I'm Scott Patton, by the way. Hello, Scott Patton, the co-producer and co-executive of everything. Exactly. So I'm in uh, San Jose, Costa Rica. You're up in uh, Br beautiful British Columbia uh, in Canada. And we're going to be talking about chiropractors. We're here. Our mission is to restore vitality to you and to the planet. And chiropractics is definitely one area that if you're not feeling 100%, or you've got some aches and pains, I firmly believe you should be spending some time uh, at the chiropractors. Indeed, Scott, actually, uh, do you know, did you see the link I posted about a movie called Undoctored? I did. Sounds uh, very interesting. There's a little bit of a conspiracy, I was going to say controversy, but conspiracy going on, I think. Well, let's add that link so people can watch it. It's free to watch for everybody until February 26th. So we give them uh, all of a week to uh, to watch it. So if anybody's picking it up right now, watch it watch it for free. Later, you may watch it anyway. Anyway, the movie Undoctored. I watched it this morning, and uh, it's by uh, it's directed by Jeff Hayes, who is a friend of ours. We also have been promoting his uh, other movie, Bot. The un oh, that's a good movie. The undoctored movie is all about chiropractors, chiropractic, and the campaign, the smear campaign of the AMA, American Medical Association, that made it its goal in 1962 to completely eliminate squash and just destroy the chiropractic. This is when they... So Martin, we had a little technical difficulty there. Can you tell us a little bit more about Unbought and uh, Chiropractors? Undoctored, Scotty, my friend. Undoctored, not Unbought. <laughs> the, the movie is about the campaign that the AMA, American Med Medical Association, waged on the chiropractic profession. They started it in about 1962, and... Uh, they call it the campaign of quackery. They they decided that that whole chiropractic idea was wrong and deserved to be quashed. Well, anyway, it was it was a true conspiracy. And at some point, one kind doctor gave the chiropractors a big stack of papers that completely showed just how sinister, underhanded, and awful the AMA was in its efforts to eliminate chiropractic. And I don't know if you remember from those days that you're not a real doctor or yes. you're a quack or whatever. That was real. That was awful and it did happen. And uh, anyway, the chiropractors sued the AMA, had to do it twice. And in 1987, one. Oh, so good. Only since 1987 in the United States, chiropractic had a good standing. That didn't happen in Canada. We didn't have any such drama here. Um, but anyway, the point is, I would like to just give some experiences of mine and some experiences of yours with chiropractic and how it's uh, worked for you and I. In the movie, yeah. in the movie, you get to see how it's worked for some regular, regular people and for some athletes, all the way to Olympic performance or uh, NBA, one of the NBA teams, Utah Salt Lake Jazz, who have had a chiropractor on staff. Uh, for the last, I think, 20 years. Anyway, wow. here's, a, here's an interesting piece of data. Uh, the average NBA injury rate is 140, and the Jazz had 61. So Big fewer, fewer injuries, fewer uh, complications, faster recovery, 
better performance. In that movie, there are several athletes giving their testimony, explaining how uh, life was before and after the chiropractic and uh, all that. How about you? Right, right. Yeah, I've yeah, had I've some had really some good really experiences, good experiences with, with uh, the chiropractors. chiropractors. And, and I actually was going to ask you, Martin, if you could, before we get into that, if you could share with everybody, you know, what is the chiropractor's philosophy uh, and how does it differ from the regular uh, allopathic medicine or the regular doctor that we go and see and he gives us something for our colds or whatever? Right. Yeah, okay, good point. So the, uh, the chiropractor's uh, perspective is that uh, the nerve energy or the vital energy of the body needs to flow along unrestricted nerves. So if, right. you, have, if you have, they call it subluxation, if you have displacement of, let's just say that the vertebrae that are normally supposed to be like this, if they get misplaced either side to side or rotationally or both, there will be a pressure put. Normally there are these nerves coming out of these openings between the vertebrae. This is a nice illustration. I should have brought my uh, skeleton spine with me, except I don't own one. But anyway, so as these nerves come out, if there's pressure put on it, you, you crimp it. And as you're crimping it, the energy won't flow as well as it would without this impingement about this restriction. So what then will happen is uh, you will experience a diminishment, a reduction in function in the area that is controlled by that particular nerve that is experiencing the whatever. So, you know, these nerves up here deal with breathing, these with your shoulders, these with, you know, whatever, down here, that's the stomach and so on. Right. Uh, legs down in your lower back deal with your uh, legs. Did I say legs? I meant nerves in the lumbar area. So you will end up with uh, pain shooting down your sciatic nerve, the famous sciatica, if you're misaligned down at the lowest end of your spine. And that's just the cool. pain side. It could be ability, athletic ability, balance, uh, function. You could have stomach, digestive problems from just and misalignment. Right. So the way that the chiropractors look after these misalignments is they give you a pill, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, they give you a shove. <laughs> oh, so they don't give you a little white pill or a little blue pill or anything no. to make you better. No, chiropractic is a uh, is a craft of manipulation. They actually get to touch you. They actually get to first, I mean, if they're real good, they first try and identify where the problem is through uh, testing, muscle testing, or other ways. Then once they understand where there is a problem, they adjust it. Like sometimes you need to move the front to the back or the back to the front or left to the right, whatever, or rotational. So they will make the correction and uh, off you go. Off you go. Yeah, the uh, the first chiropractic experience I ever had lasted about five or six years. And the reason that I went was I was sitting working in an office for an internet marketing company for two years. And one of the benefits that we had was they paid for us to go visit the chiropractor. So two blocks away was a chiropractor. I'm, I know I'm sitting here. I'm scrunching down all of my joints and everything. So I'm going to go see him. Thought it was a really good thing. And he was... Uh, very good. Let me put it to you that way. And he had a very specific process. He would crack this part, crack that part, crack here, crack there. In fact, I often thought he hurt himself more than he hurt me, the way he would be bouncing off of my hips and stuff like that. And uh, and then in the end, he would adjust my neck. And it was a really weird feeling because you never knew if he was actually going to break it or not. Never did. But you'd hear these snap, crackles, and pops, which took me a while to get used to. And one of the things that he was really good at was subtle selling. And he would tell me stories. And the one that stuck with me is he said, 20 years ago, Scott, I had two twin brothers come in and see me. 
And after three or four months, one twin brother left. And the other twin brother, I've been seeing him for 22 years now. And maybe it was 25, maybe it was 18, doesn't really matter. And he said, and that guy, he is stands up straight, he's fit, he's active, he's you know in his late 40s or whatever. And his brother has had two back surgeries and needs cane to get around. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, you know, uh, look <laughs> after your back. Big, big lesson, do you, right? Do you think the story was made up? No, I'm sure it was a true story. Uh, whether or not his back issues had to do with not going to see the chiropractor every month or not is totally up to debate. But uh, oh, hey, uh, there is a code in the medical diagnostic binder for failed back surgery. Oh, no. What is it? 50, 50 plus percent of back surgeries fail. Wow. It's, it's one of the wrongest ways to try and fix a problem. Well, it was certainly bad for this guy's twin brother. Yeah. And, uh, yeah don't don't and, recommend it to anyone. Actually, I, I was headed for that. You know, when, when I, I guess my story goes, uh, I started falling apart because of the mercury poisoning I had. And in my case, I started getting carpal tunnel syndrome, plantar fasciitis, and in the neck and in the low back. That's where the pressure was the highest. Hmm. So I was getting terrible headaches and I was getting shooting pains down into my feet and it was terrible. So my first visit was to the orthopedic surgeon and uh, he gave me a cortisol, cortison, hydrocortison shot, which made me feel better for six weeks. And then it all came back. And uh, then he scared me with surgery. Well, that wasn't going to go anywhere with me because I was just, no, no, no. As soon as I saw the statistics, they were available. I was not going to go there. So anyway, right. I found a chiropractor and a great one. And um, so what happened with me was I, for instance, fell one day. And in falling, I braced the fall with my hands and I jammed, sure. my, jammed my wrist, wrists both. So I was getting my back adjusted uh, because I, by that time I needed a lot of it. Um, I, I told him about this fall, that it was hurting. And he said, oh. And so he took my hand in his, both of them, and snapped it and and this horrendous pain and congestion and all of that that I was having in my wrist area just released like that. Just just went away. Wow. So then I told him that my foot was work, uh, was hurting. And he said, well, I can adjust that too. He adjusted my ankle and I stopped hobbling. I was, I was sort of like, you know, walking not evenly. So whew. anyway, wonderful memories of getting really effective help. One of the things that I noticed was in the middle of my back between my shoulder blades, I would have this pain. In fact, I would be bouncing on the rebounder and it would make it worse because what was happening was these two or three vertebrae were, they were in the wrong position. So they were bouncing up and down in the wrong position and it was really not very good. And I knew that part of it was leaning, oh, if not all of it, leaning over and not stretching back and everything else. So I went to the chiropractor who's, I actually changed from, because there was a 20 minute, 40 minute drive each way difference between where they, where their offices were and where I was after a few years. So I changed to a new chiropractor and I felt so guilty. And I told my old chiropractor, you know, it's 40 minutes here and 40 minutes back and here, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he says, no worry, Scott, don't worry. Come and see me every once in a while. And he's since retired. So that's, been, that's not a non-issue now. And I went to see the new guy and he took an x-ray and he showed me, first of all, how my spine was out. And secondly, how these two vertebrae up near he here and then two down here were not quite right. So we worked on it, worked on it between that. And I have to also mention doing yoga between those two things. I haven't had that pain. If we weren't talking about chiropractors and I was racking my brain for a, a story, I would probably never even thought of it. But, uh, you, you know, it was very uncomfortable, very painful. And something I really 
was worried that, oh my God, I'm going to be with this for the rest of my life. And after six months of the chiropractics and the, and the yoga and continuing to see the chiropractor and the yoga, uh, I don't even think about it anymore. And, and it's just amazing. The vitality that I feel actually, because as you say, the energy is flowing properly through our bodies and it makes a huge difference. Right. Now, I don't want to oversell chiropractic because I actually was having to go quite frequently for years. Like mm -hmm. I had, I had this problem that I was only able to identify retroactively, which was um, the relationship between the skull and the first vertebra. So that would be the yes. zero, zero and one. And the chiropractors don't actually have any means to deal with that. They adjust the relationship between one and two, two and three, three and four, but they don't have a means of fixing the skull in relation to the first vertebra, which is the atlas. And mm. uh, is it? I sure hope so. Anyway, um, there is a method and it's called atlas prophylax. And that's A-T-L-A-S-P-R-O-F-I-L-A-X. And there's a website with that, with dot C-H, because it's a Swiss method, Swiss company. I found a guy in British Columbia. There is just one guy in urban BC that practices this. Hmm. And uh, God was I lucky, because I tell you this, I used to go to a chiropractor twice a month, for years, and he would get me back in line. And then over time, it would just come out again. So I would right. probably have a good week, so-so three days and bad two days, and then I had another appointment and I had a good week, so-so three, three, four days, and then bad two, three days or something like that. Sometimes it popped right. sooner, sometimes not, but I kept going in and out. And the pain was right here in my neck between number two and three. And, it, he, oh, and, okay. and I was telling him about it and just explaining. And he said, well, we just need to keep on putting it back. Eventually, your body will figure it out. Because that's all he had. Those are all the tools he had. Well, after I did the Atlas Prophylax, which is <laughs> it's a funny procedure. It's done only once. You don't need to do it multiple times. Right, it, right. it involves a vibrator that's sort of more like a jackhammer than a vibrator. It's it's a tool that adjusts, pushes all around the bottom here where these uh, where these um, tendons or whatever they're called attach the neck and the skull. Anyway, after that procedure, I never went to a chiropractor again. That's it. Hmm. I'm done. Because my entire cool. my entire problem was caused by the misalignment between the zero and one, we kept fixing all of the other ones, and that reminds me that if you start buttoning your shirt and screw it up on the first button, you'll never get it right. Yeah, that's true. That's a good way of putting it. And so, so let's get back. Let's get back to this mo this movie. And, yeah. And, um, Undoctored. Uh, Undoctored, and it it's interesting because I read a book about a year ago that was about the history of the AMA, the American Medical Association, and you know who decided who got licensed or approved or everything else in the 1910s, 20s, and 30s, and of course it was whoever was able to kind of convince the government that they had that association, and these people when they start out were well, some of them. Uh, had no medical training at all and they put themselves off as doctors and um, they were in many ways crooks uh, it was absolutely amazing they you couldn't have so somebody had to approve medicines so these these people figured out well we could be the people that approve it and then they're going to have to pay us or we'll get a fee or we'll get something we'll make a bunch of money and the i believe it was merck had about five or six 
medications and prescription drugs that never got approved by the American uh, Medical Association in the 1920s. So one day the president of Merck, Mr. Merck, shows up at the offices and he sees the president of the AMA, I forget his name, and he's got a stack of files like this. And he puts them on the guy's desk. And he's like, what's this? And he says, well, he says, we've noticed that you haven't approved any of our medicines for the last you know, six months, eight months. And uh, and the the, dent, the the dentist, the president sort of says something along the lines of, well, you know, you haven't paid the fees and you haven't done this and you haven't done that. And so we can't approve it. Nothing to do with whether the drugs were good, bad or indifferent. And so and Mr. Merck says, well, I'm not paying you a penny. And uh, these files, I have a copy of them. And if you want, I can send the copy to the newspapers. But I think you should check them out first. And of course, what they were was the full background of the president of the AMA. The fact that he had no medical training, that he had nothing of this, that he was a charlatan in every you know possible way. And uh, after that, Merck had no problem at all getting their medicines approved as they would come up with this. I mean, they would give the research, the tests, the studies, everything else. And then uh, they never, ever, at that point in time, never paid. I don't know what the story is now. But it just, this book just went on and on and on. And it does talk about the problems the AMA had because you had these guys called chiropractors. And, you know, that was competition. And so we get into this whole political thing about, and the laws and the rules actually, and everything I else. To, I would like to butt in here, you know, back yes. then, it was not just chiropractors. It was the naturopaths, the herbalists, the homeopaths, the uh, osteopaths. All of those people. And they were all equal. Like there was the equality of the approaches. And of course, yes. there are two diametrically op opposing approaches. One is to build the patient and allow his body to build health. And that would be the approach taken by functional medicine, by natur naturopathic, osteopathic, chiropractic, and those kind of homeopathy. And, and homeopathy even further together with functional medicine also takes into account biological individuality. Where you are not treating the illness, you're treating the patient. Yes, it's very different because with homeopathy, each patient gets a different treatment. You don't have anything double blind and you don't have anything by prescription and you don't have anything by, well, if this, then that. Because if, if you have a headache, you take Tylenol. That's the medical chemical approach. With homeopathy, you asked about the symptoms and you have... 10 or 12 different homeopathic preparations, each of which can fix a headache. But is it a tension headache? Is it a hungry headache? Is it a blah, blah, whatever, different headaches? Each one of them requires a different approach. Yes. You're not trying to shut off the nerves. You're trying to support the body in yeah. health. Yeah, let's turn off the pain so you don't feel the pain and you can still have the problem going on. Yeah, instead of a tune-up. But anyway, so taking it back to the politics of it, when Rockefeller and Mellon and Carnegie got together, they decided that through their foundations, after after the disbanding of the Standard Oil back in 1910, I think it was, or 05, I can't remember now, about then, um, they decided to take the backdoor approach they have created these foundations, and these foundations uh, funded schools. And these yes. schools taught people, and these people were the doctors, and they chose the one method. And the one method is the pharmaceutical method, the one that supports the chemical pharmaceutical drugs made from petroleum and related so what she, what they did is they managed to suppress all of the other traditional, effective, energy-based, individual, whatever, blah, blah, methods that heal you. And instead, the only le legitimate, approved, again, through lobbying and government and regulatory, whatever, 
they managed to push up this method they call and it's based on treatment rather than on cure yeah they what they yeah, do is the book talks about all that too that's great yeah. i'm glad you tweaked me yeah, to they it. sell you they sell you a drug that treats your condition so it holds you in stasis it never brings you back up it just holds you in suspension until the next thing happened and so you start up here and you slowly over time get worse and worse you don't get better no well that's certainly what we're seeing in today's society aren't we yes indeed and so um the whole point that we were looping around was the problem is that the big money got together created the big education created the one method only which then got together with big insurance and yep. uh, controlling the or influencing anyway the big government they created the system that's almost like a locked up um circle the wagons the only treatment that is insured approved legit legitimate or anything you know like they they tell you like when I suggest when you're, I don't know, if you're overweight, I would be asking, well, which body type you are and are you drinking your uh, herbal tea that's correct for your metabolic dominance or I should say glandular right. dominance. That's got to be ridiculous, right? I mean, what a what a crazy talk. Partic particularly when you have liposuction. We just do that. Look after it. No problem. Yeah, liposuction. Suck it all out. <laughs> And, and and stomach surgery. Let's oh, yeah, take stomach your stomach surgery. that's supposed to be a big into something that's this big, right? Yeah. One ounce. Good plan. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> where do we take and, this? Well, I want to make it just a little sidebar because we're both Canadians and you said that they didn't have the Canadian kerfuffle drama that they had in the States. I don't know what happened. But I did talk to Dean, no controversy there. And he told me something really interesting. He, he said, the only thing that we are not allowed to say is like bad, don't do, or we're against, is vaccination. Like we can say, you know what, we don't really think you should be taking pills and we don't think you should be doing this and all these other things. But when it comes to vaccinations, it's in our charter, in our license. It's like hard coded. You do not blast vaccinations. And I just thought that was really interesting. Well, there are two concepts. One is Im immunity and the other one is vaccination. And they should be taken separately and they usually aren't. Mm -hmm. Immunization can be done in a manner that's holistic. But most vaccines are not because they are deadened viruses that have been made dead by toxic things. And that would be formaldehyde if you're lucky and mercury if you're less lucky. Of course, an adult, an adult can manage, you know, when, when my 180 pounds takes a uh, two milliliter of uh, of a vaccination uh, injection, I can metabolize it sort of. But when you put that into a um, 10 pound baby, that's a whole different story. The ratios don't work so good. And so, well, oh, I, I don't know if we should even bother getting well, on. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. But I, I, I did have, since you talked about weight and everything else and amounts, uh, there's a huge controversy about mosquito-borne illnesses going on right now, and one in particular. And, oh, yes. and I, I But I was thinking, you know, like, because you've got, I think it's measles that kills half a million people in Africa every year or children every year uh, because it brought by mosquitoes. And I thought, well, how much does a mosquito stick in your body when, I mean, or how much do a hundred mosquitoes stick in your body when it sucks the blood out? And we're pretty confident that part of what goes in is the measles and that gets 
people in uh, Africa very, very ill because, you know, they don't have strong immune systems. They're not eating good food and they're, uh, you know, they don't have our sewer systems and refrigeration, blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and I just thought, yet we're freaking out about a little mosquito putting how many molecules of something in our body and it causing huge problems. And yet we don't have any problem with someone with a syringe uh, putting in a far greater amount, regardless of whether you're a baby or an adult, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, just was something that was going through my head is like, wow, like all these people freaking out about measles by this little mosquito. And I've had mosquito bites, you know, I've been I scratching. Like, oh, I've got a Scott, I keep thinking that you must mean malaria, not measles. Malaria, sorry, malaria. And you began with M. Yeah, malaria is a huge problem in, in Africa, right? Yeah. And uh, hey, millions of people die of it. Yes. And there is a cure for it, which we could talk about some other time. It's called oxychlor. And it's the um, oxygen dichloride. So I think that's how the molecule goes. O C L2. Yes. Anyway, it's it's a simple chemical that completely wipes out malaria costs like 25 cents to treat a person. Hmm. I, I saw a documentary that showed people in Kenya or Uganda, sorry, can't remember now, uh, treating 150 people, testing 150 people, and proving that they heal with single dose overnight, 150 people that were positive malaria, wow. negative malaria. And that's another conversation that Red Cross will no longer have. All of the staff that was there was told to shut the heck up. It never happened. It just, no, nope, that movie that you have, that's all fake. We were not there. No, that's not my face. We were not there. That didn't happen. CGI. <laughs> yeah, something. But anyway, so well, this is multiple loops. So uh, yeah, I guess yeah. the AMA... If you want the an indictment, watch the movie Undoctored. It'll show you just how they operated. But to this day, they do. To this day, doctors in general do not refer people to chiropractors. Like when you have a problem, when you have a problem, especially a physical problem, like pain over here or, or indigestion over here or a headache over here or whatever those painful problem. The number one question should be, how is the structure working? Is the vital energy flowing? It right. should be number one. Once you have eliminated the chiropractic problem, maybe you should consider some nutritional issues. And only then you might want to go to the medical. Ah. Okay. There you go. Hmm. Undoctored, the documentary, it's available for free for a limited time only, like seven days. So February 25th, it'll be over. If you're hearing this or listening to this or watching this uh, after that, you're going to have to fork over a couple of schleckles probably to be able to see it. But it's well worth it because it really gives you a great understanding of how we've created this massive problem that we have, which is a lot of very, very chronically ill people and nothing that anyone seems to be able to do anything about. Okay, great. So if you have any more questions, you can reach me at Life Enthusiast, life-enthusiast.com, or you can call me at 866-543-3388. Um, awesome. And if it's Martin and Scott. And hey, what are we doing, Martin? restoring vitality to you and to the planet thanks for joining us everybody see you next time bye bye